innal hamdalillah Alhamdulillahilladzi hadana li hadza wa ma kunna linahtadiya laula an hadana Allah Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lah wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Arsalahu Allah ta'ala bil huda wa dinil haqq liyudhhirahu ala dini kullihi walau karihal almusyrikun Yaqulu ta'ala A'udzu billahi minasy syaithanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Inna aradna al-amanata 'ala as-samawati wal ardi fa abayna an yahmilnaha fa asfaqna minha Wa hamalaha al-insan Innahu kana zaluman jahula Fa ya ibadallah Al-amanah هي أساس هذا الدين لما أراد الله تعالى أن ينزل إلينا شريعته اختار جبريل قال الله فيه نزل به الروح الأمين على قلبك لتكون من المنذرين ووصف الله نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بالأمانة فقال في سورة النجم ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأه ليس هذا فحسب بل إن الأمانة هي صفة جميع أنبياء الله تعالى ورسله قال صاحب العقيدة أرسل الأنبياء ذوي الفطانة بالصدق والتبليغ والأمانة. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for numerous blessings and bounties that He had bestowed upon us. We are so grateful to Allah in all occasions. And under all circumstances, because of a lot of good things that keep coming on our time and our sight. Today, inshallah ta'ala in our khutbah, we want to remind ourselves about the significance of trust, the significance of honesty in relationships. The Quranic verse which I have started my khutbah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarizes the message that he sent to us as a trust inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ard we gave trust we suggested we proposed trust to be undertaken or to be shouldered by the heavens, the earth, and the mountains, all of them declined it. They rejected it. When the same was proposed to man, insan, me and you, we accepted it. Innahu kana baluman jahula. For sure, we did that. We accepted trust. We accepted to be honest. But our decision was full of ignorance. Our decision was full of uh, some kind of oppression. When we talk about amana, when we talk about trust, it is actually the gist. It is the summary. It is the nucleus of the Islamic faith. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided 
to send the message of Islam to us, he chose for it Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam. And when he described him in Quran, he said, Nazala bihi ruhul amin. The message of Islam, the message of Quran was descended by Jibreel, who is trustworthy, who is honesty, who is truthful. Ala khalbik, he descended it, he revealed it on you. Litakuna min al so that you can carry that message and warn people against going or going against that message. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was describing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he described him as Al-Ameen. That's why he said in Surah Al-Najm, after receiving the message from Jibreel, Ma kadhab al-fu'adu ma ra'a. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never told a lie about the message, about the interface that he had with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. The concept of trust, it cuts across all the messengers and prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the authors of the books of Aqeedah, the one who authored the Aqeedah that came to be known as Aqeedah al Awam, he said, Arsal al Anbiya, Dawil Amana, Dawil Fatwana. Allah said to us, the messengers, who were bright messengers. And these were their attributes. Bisidqi wa tabliqi wal amana. They were truthful, they were trustworthy, and they were honest. So with this introduction, we come to know, brothers and sisters in Islam, that the summary of our religion, the summary of our faith, it is trust. It is honest. That is why in another Quranic verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an instruction and he says, Inna Allah ya'amurukum an tu'addul amanati ila ahliha. Allah gives you an instruction that you take back the trust to the rightful owners. So we are supposed to be trustful. We are supposed to be honest in all our dealings. When it comes to financial transactions, we need to be trustful. When it comes to our marital relationships, we need to be trustful. We need to be honest. Because we have gone against those teachings. That is why today you know what is going on in our nation, Uganda. The song of the day is about DNA paternity testing. Families are about to break down if they have not yet broken. Husbands have taken decisions to take their children to DNA testing without the knowledge of the wives. There is a lot of fidgeting going on. The question is, if you got married to this woman, if you got married to this husband, well knowing that, when Islam was talking about marriage, the concept of trust was at the center. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while giving us the guidelines on a person fit for marriage, on the side of a woman he said that When the Prophet was giving guidance, he said that you have different criteria on choosing a wife for marriage. You can choose the wife, you can choose a woman, because of her wealth. You can choose her because of her dignity, because of her family background, because of her beauty. But at the end of the day, the Prophet said, far far yadak. Go with the religious one. Go with the trustful one. Go with the faithful one. You shall be settled. That is the guidance. When it came on the right person to choose as a husband, those of you who are guardians of some daughters and those daughters have reached the age of marriage, the Prophet gave you the guidance 
When someone comes to you and he has fulfilled the two qualifications, he's faithful and his morality is okay, Father, with you, give him a hand in marriage. Those are the pre-qualifications for marriage. Because at the end of the day, when you choose a woman who is fearing Allah, when you choose a religious one, she's not going to cheat on you. So the fracas, the sag of DNA, shall be very far away from your family. But when we went against that principle, today we are crying. Pastor and sisters in Islam, لَكَدْ حَثَّنَ الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ حِفْظِ الْفُرُوجِ you know that Quran has emphasized taking care of our private parts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ He was talking about several categories of believers, several categories of righteous people. And he said, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And those who guard against their modesty, those who guard their private parts, Illa ala azwajihim. If it is to expose it, if it is to spend their sexual desires, they should spend it with their spouses, with their wives, with their husbands. Auma malakat aymanuhum, or those whom their right hands possess. When they do that, fa inna hum malumin. When they do that, you spend your sexual desires with your spouse. You shall not have any blame. You are not going to be caught in the current problem. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't. Any person who shall go behind the limited allowed criteria, those ones are the transgressors of the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, when we fail to adhere to that, that is why today we are crying. When we choose to transgress the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to guarding our private parts, today our families are not settled. And a person who seeks to spend his or her sexual desires outside marriage, those are the transgressors. Now we are testing the reward, the fruits of the transgression. Brothers and sisters in Islam, that is why it is so important that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a call, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cautions us as believers, we just have to surrender. But because today we think that we are so wise, you think that you can take this route and succeed, and then you go against the commandments of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, that's the suffering now. The question is, who is safe today? Who is safe? Everyone is crying. Every person is doubting. But alhamdulillah, the faith of Islam had given us some guidance even after marriage. First of all, as you know, Islam had closed any avenue for doubt. If you are married, you have an obligation to trust your wife. It starts with trust. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man yadman li ma bayna lihyayhi wa ma bayna rijlayhi afman lahul jannah. I understand what is making you obedient to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is to attain Allah's pleasure and at the end you get paradise. One of the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how we can attain that success, the Prophet said, who can guarantee me to, to protect, to safeguard what is that body part that is found in between his jaws? He's talking about the tongue. And the private parts which lie in between the legs. I give you guarantee that you are going to be given the Jannah. That's the simple guarantee. After marriage, 
the major objective is procreation, is to have children. The main objective of marriage, who are tanasul, so that we can have the continuity of the human race. Now in this era, whereby our children are being doubted, don't forget as Muslims that there is nothing that Islam had not addressed. The first issue is that today, as you know, science and technology is with us. The science of DNA is with us. We cannot say that we shall not subject ourselves to DNA. That's not possible. First of all, some of you are having children or are having some, uh, your parents are found outside the country. Today it is almost becoming a requirement of the developed countries that when you are applying for a visa for a child or for a father or for a relative, they require proof of DNA. So we can't get out of it. That is where science and technology has reached. But when it comes to marriage, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has ever had such a case. First of all, in Islam, you cannot claim paternity from illicit sexual intercourse. That's a principle. You cannot claim legal paternity. You cannot claim legal parentage outside marriage. That is an established principle which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laid down when he said, you know that story, whereby two companions had a paternity dispute amongst them. One of them was saying that, this is my brother, because he had got the instruction, because this child was born by a slave woman who used to belong to his father. And you know according to Islam, when you have a slave woman, you are allowed either to take her as a servant at home, but you are also allowed to take her for sexual intercourse or for sexual relationship. So one of them was saying that this child is a product of my father because the father used to own this slave girl, this slave woman. The other one said, no, this one belongs to my brother because my brother told me that he had sexual intercourse outside marriage with this woman and therefore he told me before death that I should claim for our blood. I should claim for our lineage. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while handling this paternity dispute and the child is in between, he looked at the child. According to a tradition of the Prophet, he said, When the Prophet looked at the child, he saw clear resemblance with the person who is claiming for having sired the child outside the legality of Islam. But despite that, the Prophet said, The child, the child is parentage. The child's paternity is established with a person who has the legal marriage. That is the decision of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the first principle is, you cannot claim a right from a wrong. Today we are facing a challenge. Someone might have had sexual intercourse with a certain married woman. Well knowing that this woman is married, that one alone, Subhanallah, it's a grave sin. But as if that is not enough, he came to know that maybe this woman, you know, she conceived out of that relationship. After this woman giving birth, and this woman is still within that marriage, he comes to claim for that child. What kind of shame is that? You have already committed a grave sin. You would have sat somewhere and you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. But how comes that you are so bold that you come and you say, excuse me, child number three out of the five that you have is mine. Subhanallah. Where is modesty? Where is modesty in Islam? 
That is why the principle of Islam, such a claim cannot be entertained. Al-Waladul al-Firash. In this situation, the paternity is established with the person who is married to that woman. But at the same time, this one shouldn't give a blanket cover to our wives to commit adultery. It is based on the concept of trust. Because some women have taken bad advantage of that. Because you know that every child that you produce in marriage, that child shall be attributed to that husband, then you go and commit adultery. Subhanallah. That is also another grave sin. How are you going to appear before Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala? When you have attributed a certain son to a certain lineage, where that son does not belong. So the balance of Islam is in such a way that you cannot claim a right from a wrong. That's the decision of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But at the same time, you cannot also deny that child. Now here comes a situation. Someone has come and is claiming that this child is his from your legal wife. The principle of Islam is that all the children that are born during the continuity of the marital relationship with that woman, those children are yours. But I understand you are a human being. I'm also a human being. Wallahi, you cannot remain the same when you start hearing of such. You are going to start looking at this child with some kind of discrimination. Some of the footages that have come to us People who have gone to DNA, and after the DNA has confirmed that these children are not biologically attributed to you, they come back home with frowned faces. As children run to come and welcome them, some of them have gained, have, have gotten slaps. So as a human being, you cannot remain the same. So you are caught in such a situation whereby the religion of Islam says, all children are yours. But there is another reality coming from another corner saying that, excuse me, that child is mine. How do you handle that situation? To handle that situation, there is no problem to invoke the use of science and technology. And you subject such a child to DNA. When the DNA confirms that that child is yours, alhamdulillah, no any person can now place any claim against your children. But in case the DNA confirms that this child does not belong to you, it is not over. You are still taken to be the legal father by the fact that this woman belongs to you. So what do you do? You follow the Islamic procedure. First of all, if you can cover up that situation, there is no problem. Al Islam yahuthuna ala sitir. Islam enjoins us to cover up with such people who have committed some wrongs. But if you cannot bear with it, then Islam has laid down a certain process. That process is known as the process of li'an. You have to go to the imam, you have to go to the Muslim judge, so that you lodge your complaint and then you shall pass through the process. And after that process, the Imam or the Muslim judge shall decide that this child is no longer yours because you have disowned it. And then after that, also you shall be separated with that wife. Brothers and sisters in Islam, that is the Islamic approach. But my point is, what has happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin, Allah does not change the state of affairs of a certain community until the community itself changes. When we started adopting some kind of slogans, which slogans are actually leading to zina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set us free. Since when did you start saying that a man is not supposed to be asked about the number of children? How comes? Islam has given you an allowance as a man up to the maximum of four. So if we are to count the children, we are counting the children out of the four legal wives. Since when did you start saying that? 
that for you you are free, you can go and commit anything that you want, and you think that this woman you live at home, she's not going to reciprocate, she's not going to venge. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin. Allah does not change the state of affairs of a certain community hatta yughayyiru ma bi'anfusihim until they change. If you want to change for better, let's go back to the roots of Islam. Aqulu qawli hadha. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Islam has given us the remedy on each and everything. I wish to call upon parents, especially husbands, not to go so much for what is going on today. Islam had taught us the concept of husn of one, the concept of benefit of doubt. The children that have been born in the continuity of the legal marriage relationship with you, according to Sharia, they are yours. And you shouldn't have any doubt in them until when you find yourself in such a situation that is so stressful and you start casting too much doubt. That is when maybe you can resort to means of disowning this child. But let us keep our families intact. I want to conclude the khutbah by the words of Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullahi alayhi. A few days back, someone posted a certain message on social media. And he said, men, you had advised us to leave your phones untampered, not to look into your phones, so that we can save ourselves from stress. And we adhered to your advice. So, please, don't tamper with the children so that you can be saved from stroke. In other words, when you told them that they shouldn't look into your phones, they said, we have accepted. Now, time has come to turn around against you. They are saying that we accepted your advice, we are not looking into your phones, so let the situation continue. But also, please, don't look into the affairs of children so that you save yourself from stroke. Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullahi alayhi, says, A'iffu ta'iffu nisa'akum anil maharim. This is the principle. Any husband who wants his wife to keep herself for him, start by keeping yourself for her. That's the principle. A'iffu ta'iffu nisa'akum anil maharim. If you want modest in your wife, be modest. Why? If you think that for you, you are going to go outside and you commit zina, and then you become so difficult and hard on your wife that she must protect yourself, my dear, you are wrong. Imam Shafi'i says, Inna zina dainun. Commission of zina, commission of illicit sexual relationship outside marriage, it is a debt. When you give a debt, or when you get a debt from someone, just to know that among your family members, someone shall have to pay for that debt. That's the principle. So brothers and sisters in Islam, if we want modest, let us be modest. You want modest? Be modest. Charity begins at home. It doesn't matter how much security you are going to build around your wife. I understand you have the surveillance cameras. I understand you have tipped the Ascari that when you see her going out, please inform me. I understand that you are tracking her phone, but wallahi al-azim, all these are not going to give you the desired benefit until you guard yourself. That's the principle. Volga naba kiriza. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yazim be dini ya feyo obusiramu kubwe sigwa. Obusiramu mwonnamu wa mutunurira. 
Ogeno kumari nisangu obu samara izinze. Butambuli la kuprinsipo ya buwesigwa. Obuwesigwa. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Buyesa kunsi. Na abu saku guru. Na abu teka kunsozi. Zonane zigana. Fenetubu kiliza. Oluwale lo tulimurembe. Ngobuwesigwa tubusude. Oluwale lo mchimanye shigenda maso munsi. Aba antubaka aba. Aba antubabu usabu usa. Oba amana. Aba zaali duamu makaga. Aba amana babo basibabu. Na ya boluganda bakiliza. Mwete mchima nyitu wa busiramu wa watu kubiliza. Okukumu wa mwelele wa fe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na atu gama anti waladhina hum lifuroje him hafidhun. Na aba bakumu wa mwelele wa abwe. Illa ala azwaje him. Okuja ko. Ngababu laga ko. Wanga bamala. Echeta agocha abwe. Nabachara ba abwe. Nabami ba abwe. Mbana aba bako zecho. Fa inna hum gairu malumin. Teba jaku nenyeze wa. Ne Allah ya tuwoni inga na gamba Fama niptaka wara adhalik Ananu nya ye kubo liyona Elima lo kwa gala kwe Olima la oengeli yona juwe ya gala kumela Ati umala mo kwa gala ku Na yenga takuli mbufumbo Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya tukisana gafa ulaika umul hadun Awe basu siye nkumo za Allah Evi kumo biya mungu subhanahu wa ta'ala Awe lugana abakiliza ngatumaliliza Bwetuwasu ke evi kumo biya mungu but once you call me to the Allah, or rather your family is sick of. Much money is in Mugwango or rather. Our side is very much cutu, back cuta, back what I want. I'm about to allow back the DNA. Now you choose to chill in. We was a war, chill no bote siga. Kuvanga obsira mugwango amages. Nebugama ati wabawa kuwa samuchala. Nondo muchala munadini. Ajoku ati wensoni. Ana kuwe kumi na nebubanga toriwo. Na mwe mchana kuwa msinamu wako wa magezi. Tuwomono onda msajja. Nondo msajja wa mwempisa. Wa msajja muna dini. Benabe tuwa viteka kubali. Netuwa salu wa abulonji. Netuwa salu wa sente. Uluwa nilu katituka hawa. Neva urugana. Newa kubadenge yu mbeda wetu weli. Njagade mkutbeno. Mufune principles. Bili mprincipos wa msinamu. Omuntu yena. Buwabanga tainabu fumbo. Takle imi inga zade. Echo nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam achia Salamu na gama ati alwaladu lilfirash Omwana ajakuwe buwanga muntu Eya wasa alino mchala Na yulu alire nsonyi ziwede muantu Shaifani ya kukema No yingiri na makagu wa musajja Gochmanyi mulonyi inti go yingiri na mchala mfumbo Shaifani ne kukema no bake chikola chiwakola na ye No lo oza Tio mchalo ya funye urubuto uwe chikolo echu Omoni yao no mchala na kukakasanti munange. Echikula chetuwa maddemu. Chafu demu chino nechino. Echo nechita kumalira. Okube nanti obako wori. Osabe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kusonyi wa mwe gairile. Na yu labi omwana akuze. Miyake bili, miyake satu, miyake ena. Ovude yonga toli na. Sonyi na katono. No jano ugama nti omwana uoku satu mwaba abata ano wangi. Musa jagori musidamuchi. Koso madinichi. Ensoni zata andika diyo kugwa muumma ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Chovola vanti nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya salawo. Na gama ati omu sajia afana gana kubu ati. Tetumuwa muana. Alu wala dhuli lfirash. Omuana tumuwa. Oyo nanyi ni mchale ya muasa. Nye mchisera chechimu. Abachala mafeba tusasile. Bale mekosa prinsipe yo. Okuwe nanti bana uza vane ya bebuelu. Kababa yingi za mulaini ya zitali zaabwe. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala ogenda kumudawa. Ogenda kutunlote ya mwachenji cha Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Nga habana basatu, habana batana, habana mukaga. Wallahi nga siba musajwe ya lingabawo. Ogenda pite biyote ya masoga mungu subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oluwale ele nkula ya DNAZ. Kutuwe bula. Kumanga Allah ya gamba. Inna Allah la yugayiru ma bi kawmin. Hata yugayiru ma bi anfusihim. Kato ndatachi usambela ya mantu. Okuchusa nga mantu wachusisa. Noruwe nchu prinsipo ya obsiramu. Omwana ye nazari duwa kuchitanda cho mwana o. Na ye nchi manye olimutu na gedi mutu. Botani kukuli liza marubozi. Nga waluwa songa mubana bo. Tusobula kusetoli inga. Omwana otani kwa mutu nuri ya mutu nuri nembi. Tocha nakala muwe rafizi. Mumbera bweti. Tengwali mutawano soholo koze sa. Ekube ya science and technology. Kukaka sechi ntuwecho. Ekube ya diyo mwerivayo. Nerika kasanti omwana uwo. Alhamdulillah, wabati wachari wa mutu ya nasu mula kubeli ranti ya mkleiminga. Na hebu elifa yekune ilaganti wa mwana siwo. Techite gezanti miwede. 
or you know, create a process of Siram, no Megana or Wegana of Siram. No one so gay about Uganda back in Zanga. To Madiza, to day to Teres. To day to Wesi of Siram who was to take a call. About Uganda back in Ziza, to day to Chimane, and tea, or moon to you and Naya Galamuchana walk from Wekumida. Now I'm Wekumida, a principal of Siram. Imam Shafi Yagamba, a ifu, a ifu nisa akumadim maharim, Bemba Magalavachala, Mabe Kumide, Namimbe Kumide, Yagama ti in Nazina Dainun, Banago Kubari Gabanja, Obwezi Banja, in Akraftahu, Bori Wola, Faluafa ala Ahali Baiti Kafa Alami, Kakasa Bukakasanti, what are you mutu munyumbayo? Again, Oxasule Banje. No less on Gaya Boluganda Bakiza, to come family Zafi. And a better to know Kubanga to balance singer. Omchala ye kume, abere muesigua. No mami ye kume, abere muesigua. So Roku Ranga to Kuma, families is a fe. Allah was solo was a limo. Allah Bashir in Nadir, for in the Hujala Shano Marakum Midari Kahitokal. In the Allah Malay got also Luna and Nabi, Ya Ayo Haladina Aman was solo alehi was salimo to Slima. Wakala Sola Baha alehi was salam, Mansola alay salat and Wahila Sola Baha alehi be Asher, Allah Masoli ala Muhammad. وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداك أعداء الدين يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله قوموا لصلاتكم يرحمكم الله